Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting Photoshop tutorial. In this video we will start out with this photo taken by my good friend Jimmy on our Zombie Hunter visual effect shoot, no pun intended, and convert it into this much more stylized and cinematic looking image using nothing but the Boris FX Optics plugin. Boris FX Optics, in case you don't know, is kind of like a digital toolbox for photographers. It's filled with effects, filters, lens flares, digital processes, color correction and a ton of other awesome tools to really help you take your images to the next level. But before we dive into it, full frontal disclaimer, this video is sponsored by Boris FX. Besides optics, Boris FX creates really cool effects and plugins for filmmaking and visual effects. From the Academy Award winning Planar Tracker Mocha to the huge Sapphire and Continuum Effects collections as well as the powerful Paint and Rotor tool Silhouette, these tools are used by professionals and hobbyists like myself all over the world, they work with most of the popular editing tools out there and there's tons of different licensing options to suit your budget. If you'd like to check out Optics, Boris FX has also given me a special coupon code SURFACEDOPTICS25 that will give you 25% off the ones of Perpetual or the annual license. And for anything else, including any of the other products, you can use my standard coupon code SURFACEDSTUDIO in one word to get 15% off the final price. And yes, that will also support me along the way, which I always really appreciate. But now I feel like I've waffled on forever, let's finally jump into the tutorial. Welcome to the exciting world of Adobe Photoshop. This is the final shot that we will be creating in this tutorial. We will start out with this really cool photo here that my good mate Jimmy America took. Using nothing but the Boris FX Optics plugin, we will turn it into this photo here, including the muzzle flash, the additional gore on Selena, the damage and destruction in the background, the lens flare, chromatic aberration, the lot. And as always, if you do want to follow along with this tutorial, you will be able to grab the original photo that Jimmy took off my website. So simply go to surfacedstudio.com forward slash downloads and you'll be able to grab this file and follow along. Let me just delete the completed layer and let's get started. First off, let's right click the layer and convert it into a smart object so we can apply smart filters to it. Then with the layer selected, simply come into filter, Boris FX and let's launch optics. Here we are in optics and before we get started, let me just reset my effect stack and now let's convert this image into something a little bit more striking and cinematic. First, let's add a muzzle flash to the front of my gun. For that, down in the filters, let's come into the render tab and in here you will find an effect called S underscore muzzle flash. So with the new effects layer on top of our original image, let's select the S underscore muzzle flash effect and this will render a muzzle flash onto our current layer. You can click into the middle of this muzzle flash and move it to drag it around. So let's place this at the tip of the gun. It also has this circular gizmo around it and you can click and drag on the edges of this circular gizmo to position that muzzle flash in 3D space in your scene. So let's twist it a little bit more so it kind of matches our scene, make sure it aims right at Selena. I'm going to drag it just a little bit higher up. And now you could jump into the presets and select a different preset, but I'm actually quite happy starting out with the default here. Let me just zoom in just a little bit more. Let's simply come to the effects parameters and let's just tweak this a little bit. First off, let's come to the primary and let's bring up the brightness just a little bit more just to make that center beam a little bit stronger. But I'm actually going to make it a little bit thinner, maybe round about there. Then let's come to the bottom. And right now the glow color is set to blue, which doesn't really fit. So let's click on this. Let's change this to like an orangey yellow. I don't want to go too saturated, maybe something like that. Let's hit OK. And that looks really cool. Let me just increase the glow width by just a tad. And by the way, you can also come up in here and select the gun and the variant of the muzzle flash. Right now this is set to an M16 variant 2. So you can check out some of the other muzzle flash variants here depending on what style you're looking for. But I kind of liked variant number 2 so let's stick with that. Let's press F to zoom back out and let's add a few rooms onto Selena. Now she's already wearing some effects makeup but I want to add a whole bunch more grunge and wounds and decay to zombie Selena so she looks a little bit more scary and just a whole lot less human. For that let's add another layer into our stack and now let's add some grunge, make it red so it's kind of blood gore colored and then paint it onto Selena's arm and her face. Make sure the edit switch is enabled on our new layer. Then again come into the render tab and in here you'll find an effect called S underscore grunge. So let's apply this effect and this will apply some really cool looking dynamically generated grunge to our image and we can come over into the presets and select from a whole bunch of different grunge looking presets. Now the one I want to pick is paint by numbers. 
The color is totally wrong, but it's kind of this bloody splattery pattern that I kind of want on Selena's arm. However, we do need to customize this a little bit. And again, for that, let's come into the parameters. And these grunge layers are made up of a number of different stamps. You can see stamp one, stamp two, stamp three. It's not set to anything. And you can change these patterns to anything that you want. So you can kind of create your own grunge layers and they get generated and they all look different depending on your settings. Now let's just change stamp one from garage floor over to speckles and stamp two can stay on paint spray. So we just got these blotches all over our image, but let's make these stamps a little bit smaller. For that, I'm just going to leave stamp one as it is for now. Let's come to stamp two, which are these big paint splatters right here. And let's just reduce the relative size. Let's just bring that down to something that we'd want to have pattern wise on Selena's arm. And that looks about right. But now there's very few of them. So let's bring up the relative density of stamp two. Let's simply just jack this up to spray this all over the image. I might also want to bump up this very stamp two size. It just varies the size of all of the individual stamps. So there's a bit more variability in the size of them. Maybe I'll bring the size down a little bit more though and just bring up the relative density again. That looks pretty good. The color is way off though, right? Like we don't want floral green wounds. So let's change stamp one color to a really dark brown red kind of color. And let's change stamp two color to something just a little bit brighter. Again, red for blood. Let's hit okay. And that looks pretty good. I think the stamps are still a little bit too big. So let's just make them yet a little bit smaller. And by the way, if you can't increase the density anymore, you can actually just come in here and type a number. So let's maybe go with 15, hit enter. You can jack this up past the maximum point of the slider. So that looks pretty good. Speckles are still neon green. So let's again change them to something like a really dark red for color one. And again, just like a slightly brighter red for color number two. Let's zoom in on Selena. And size wise and pattern wise, that actually looks pretty good. Let's come to the very top of the effect parameters. And if you don't like how these stamps are distributed, you can just play with the seed value here, which changes the random number that gets used to generate the stamp pattern. And just play with this until you find something that looks good. I think that actually looks pretty good. Now, the blast seems a little bit too bright, so I'm just going to lower stamp two color two just a little bit more. That looks pretty good. Let's come to the very bottom and enable a little bit of embossing so that the pattern doesn't look quite so flat. Right now, Ember's bump scale is zero, but let's just jack this up a little bit. And I don't want to go too hard, right? This looks really weird. So I just want a very little bit of Ember's, maybe 0.1, just to give these specks and that grain and dirt just a little bit of shape. And I may want to play with the light angle as well, just to, you know, just make those wounds really seem like they're indented into Selena's skin. So that looks pretty good, but I don't want these blood splatters all over the scene. That's just a little bit too gory for me. So let's add a mask and paint on where this blood splatter is visible. For that, with the edit switch enabled on our S grunge layer, by the way, let's just click into this and actually call this layer zombie blood. And then with this layer, select add a new mask and let's add a paint mask. By default, that will hide all of the effects from this layer. But now with this brush, by the way, hold down control or command, left click and drag up and down to scale up this brush, I can now click and drag to paint the wounds onto Selena where I want them to appear. By the way, simply right click to erase again. Now I wanna make my brush just a little bit smaller. Also in the toolbar, I'm actually going to reduce the feathering because I don't want the edges of that brush to be too soft. So maybe 15 or 20. Let's zoom in a little bit more. And let's just paint some of these wounds onto Selena, actually make the brush just a little bit smaller. I kind of want to be really careful with painting on that detail without it looking like I just used a big stroke brush to go over the whole thing. So I'm just going to paint a whole bunch of little details over Selena's arm, her shoulder, maybe just add some on her face as well. I'm just varying my brush just to make it not too obvious that I'm actually painting patterns onto this image. Let's just erase a couple. Let's not go totally overboard either. Let's zoom out. And I'd say that actually looks pretty gruesome. So I'm pretty happy with this layer. Next, let's add some other grunge into this image onto the concrete on the ceiling and the floor just to make the whole environment look a whole lot more dilapidated like I'm hunting zombies in some rundown underground dungeon. For that, let's again add another layer to our effect stack. And let's once again use the as grunge effect. Again, feel free to pick any of the cool looking presets that you prefer. The one I want to use is called Rough Broken Floor. Now, right now this grunge layer is kind of overlaying everything a bit too strongly. So let's change the blend mode of this layer from normal 
over to multiply to blend that grunge a little bit better with our image, but it's just covering everything and that's not what I want. So again, let's use a mask to define where this grunge is visible with the layer edit switch enabled. Let's add a new mask and let's add an easy mask. The easy mask lets us define what is the foreground and what is the background in our image and the effect will only be applied to the foreground elements. So up here in the brush tool you find options for painting the foreground, painting the background, painting something you're not quite sure on, as well as painting missing elements and erasing. So let's select the paint foreground. Let's just make the brush a little bit bigger. And yes, me and Selena are technically the foreground elements in this shot, but I want the effect, the cracks to be applied to the background. So I'm going to paint the background as if it was the foreground. So let's draw the foreground, which is this green color here, onto the ceiling and some of these pipes. Maybe that here, a little bit off the wall on that end. And I might as well include all of the areas on the right side of Selena. Let's paint around the ground as well. And down here, let's just paint the ground in green. And maybe I'll paint this pillar here as well. And let's switch to painting the background. And I wanna make sure that I kind of paint over myself, over the gun, the muzzle flash, as well as the electrical wires in the background. I don't really want cracks appearing here. I'm just going to paint over Selena as well. And then let's just fill in the rest on the left side of the image. So that's the background, the areas where the effect will not be applied and anything in between Boris effects optics will simply just blend between them. Then on top right hand corner, let's select to generate the mask. And you can already see the effect has appeared on our green areas, but let's just click on the image on this layer just to hide the mask. So you can see all of the grunge effects being applied to the background. There's some bright spots here because the mask didn't quite include some of these areas. So let's switch back to the mask itself. Let's reselect to painting the foreground. Let's just come in. Let me just make sure I'm painting that in properly. Again, let's regenerate the mask. Check this out. And yes, yeah, there you go. That's much better. Let's zoom out. And that looks pretty good. I might just quickly jump over into the effect parameters. And again, I might just play with the seed parameter until I find a pattern and a distribution of these stems that I'm happy with. I might also change some of these colors here from brown to a slightly more dark gray desaturated color. I don't want quite as much brown in there. Let's come to the very bottom and I'm finding that the emboss is a little bit too noisy. So let's lower this emboss threshold here to maybe around 0.5 or so. That looks pretty good. Let's rename the layer to cracks. And now with these effects added, let's add some color grading to bind all of these pieces together and just make it look a little bit more cohesive. So again, let's add another layer into our effects stack. Down in the filters, let's come into the Film Lab tab. And in here, there's tons of cool effects for color processing and giving your images a really cinematic look. The one I'm going to pick is the Film Stocks effect. So let's apply that to our layer. And again, in here, there's tons of really cool looking presets. So you can go with some really alien -y, greenish style effects or others that are much cooler in tone and just a little bit darker. I'm kind of liking this Aqua Color XT 116 millimeter effect right here. And I do recommend that if you add some generative effects like muzzle flashes, cracks, you're rendering moons or other elements into your image first, add the color grading and the processing effects after that because it's kind of like a sandwich press, it binds all of those effects much better into that original image. However, let's make a few tweaks and let's jump over into the effect parameters. Let's zoom in just a little bit on Selena. Now I'm going to bump the contrast up just a tiny little bit more. Let's come down to the bottom to the vignette settings. Let's zoom all the way back out. Let's just bring up the opacity to maybe 10 or so. I just want the edges of the image just to be a little bit darker. And you can come to the bottom and add some additional grain, but there's already some really nice grain from this film stocks effect. So I'm actually pretty happy with this. Now, to make this image look a little bit more horror, let's add some chromatic aberration, which kind of distorts the red, green, and blue colors in your image disproportionately, so you can kind of see some of this really strange color distortion effect. Now, I can't quite remember which category that sits in, so let's simply use search to search for chromatic aberration. Before we apply the effect, let's, however, add a new layer on top of our stack, come back to the filter, and let's select the chromatic aberration effect and let's zoom in on the top right hand corner here just so we can see what that is doing just a little bit better. Right now we have no distortion. So let's just jack up the red distortion from zero all the way to 100. And you can now see how the red color channel is being distorted different from the other colors. Let's also increase the green distortion by just a little bit. 
And if the effect is a little bit too subtle for you, you can actually lower this anamorphic squeeze here. So let's reduce the red anamorphic squeeze from one to maybe 0.7. And so you can see how that color is being pushed out a whole lot more. Let's zoom all the way back out if you disable the effect. So that's without chromatic aberration. Let's re-enable that. You can kind of see how it just adds a little bit of that intensity feeling to the image overall. Finally, the last thing I want to do is add a lens flare into the image. However, I don't want to add a lens flare to the muzzle flash itself because it would block the main part of the image. I'm actually going to add it into the top left hand corner here as if it was a light shining down onto this shot. So let's add another layer into our effects stack. Down in the filters, let's come into the light category. Let's browse through to find the S underscore lens flare effect. So let's apply that to our layer. Let's grab this lens flare and yeah, I don't want to position it right here on the muzzle flash because it would block most of the actual detail of the image. So let's drag the lens flare all the way up to the top left end here, just like it's kind of a light shining down on this scene. And let's just browse through these presets to find something that looks good. And I kind of like this bright effect here. For one, it's nice and cool. It kind of fits the tone of the image, but I also like that it kind of frames the shot itself with these two horizontal lines right there. Let's just reposition the center point to push that down just a little bit. Now I don't like that this middle element here is a little bit too bright. So let's come into the effect parameters and I really like the lens flare effect. It looks really good and you can customize absolutely anything about them. You can even go into the details and customize every single element of this lens flare effect. However, for now, I just want to bring down this other brightness here, which controls all of the elements beyond the hotspot on the race. So let's just lower that just a little bit so it's not too bright, still visible, but just a little bit more faint. It's not so in the way. And I think that looks really nice. Let's come up to the top left hand side and click on done to apply the optics effect to our layer in Photoshop. And with that, we're done. We took this base image of me hunting zombie Selena and turned it into something much more stylized and cinematic. We added muzzle flashes, blood and gore, cracks, decay, lens flash, distortion, color grading and just the stylized look. And hopefully this tutorial gave you a useful look at some of the cool stuff that you can do with the Boris FX Optics plugin. And that is all there is to it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and please don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. All and any useful links you will find in the video description and please leave any comments, questions or suggestions down below. And with that, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.